So now let's meet. I'm delighted to be our next guest, who we're going to be chatting with, is really a legend because his record label, Chess, is one of the great record labels of all time. And I'm delighted to welcome to our show now, Marshall Chess. <laughs> it's a great, uh, great honour to have you on the show. And you've got this um, great new record out, which is. Uh, a lot of the great blues people that you had on chess with new accompaniment. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to, I will come on to that in a moment, but I'd like to start off. How did chess records start up? My father and my uncle started it. They had a, a nightclub where a lot of black musicians hang out in 1947. Yeah. Chess started in 1950. And one by one, we had all the great blues greats in the world. Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, Little Walter, Sonny Boy Williamson, John Lee Hooker, yeah. Eddie James, Chuck Berry, it, Bo Diddley. I know. It's, it, uh, There's I, never been a label like it. They're, they're quite incredible. Some of the yeah. greatest blues artists, the great Willie Dixon, the greatest blues greatest. poets that, that has ever existed, right. were all on that label. All on so, that label yeah. became the foundation of rock and roll. The, the, you guys in Britain and the UK is what really spread it. All the great British groups that were influenced by chess. And all the blues music they listened to on it. Yes, right. of course. And of course, and what made it different as a label from the other labels that are around at that time, do you think? We had great studios. Create making the best music was the key to making money. I mean, our artists came to us, they wanted a better life, they wanted to make money. But my uncle and my father realized very early that making the best records made the most money. Everyone was happier. Now this record, you've got, um, for instance, there's a lot of great tracks. There's uh, Memphis Slim Mother. I yeah. know Tom Jones, he loves that song. Yeah. That's a great, these great songs. But you've got kind of, it's very interesting. They've been, how would you say, reworked or retrofitted retro with rhythm, is, is, is the way you put it. How well, you... I, I had the opportunity to work at a label that, that started hip hop, Sugar Hill Records, in America, where Grandmaster Flash, Melly Mel, White Lines, the message came out of. And I met Keith LeBlanc, the drummer, who became Tech Ed here in the UK. Doug Wimbush was the bass player. He played with the Stones, Living Color, and uh, Skip McDonald was Little Axe now. And they, they were the original rhythm section. I became friends with them, and uh, we decided to try this project where we took the vocals off the old blues records and added those three guys with a modern hip hop sort of rhythm section to the old voices. Now, some of the purists might say, well, hang on a minute, you're kind of, they you're, hate you're, it. you're missing with the Mona Lisa here. You're they kind of, you're me. repainting the, yeah. the hay wing. What are you doing? Well, you know, when I grew up and I was lucky enough to grow up in the company and one of my jobs was spread the blues. And we knew that we had this magic, but we wanted to turn on every generation to it. So I did it. I did it with Electric Mud, a psychedelic blues album, folk blues albums, everything I could. And uh, this is another shot at it, you know, spreading this great music. What to is the, the new great audience. thing about the blues, do you think, for you? The blues tells the story of life that affects all of us. And if you listen to the blues, you get lessons in life. I mean, blues came from people who didn't know how to read or write that had problems. They moved from the South to the North in America. Those lyrics of blues records helped a lot of people. It was like musical psychology. Yeah. And tell us about some of the, I mean, we've got a bit of footage of uh, Muddy Waters. He uh, was the greatest. How would, you, how would you describe him? As a man? If he was born, if he was, if he was born in Africa, he'd have been the chief of the tribe or the president. He was a regal, great man, and I, to me, he's the greatest blues artist that ever lived. He just was amazing. I mean, in the way he sang, and when he was young, before white people discovered him, he was older. When he was young, he was a major, major sex symbol, man. He, he made women scream and cry when he got on stage. You know. Well, let's have a look at him right now. Got my mojo Got my mojo Got my mojo Got my mojo working but it just don't work on me Got my mojo Just don't work on you. That's really fantastic. Now, I suppose my last question, this record's great, there's, but also I heard that there's a, is there a film in production about chess Two now? Two films. About, is it Cadillac Records? Is yeah, that what Cadillac it's is one and the other one is called Chess or maybe it's going to be called Who Do You Love? Both different stories. 
both about, though, my father's relationship with Muddy Waters. Very unusual at that era for a white and black man to be friends and go to each other's houses and work together. And is it true Beyonce is going to be playing Etta James? Do you know if that's going to be? Beyonce? Yeah. Yes, I saw her. Uh, I, I've heard the track she cut, and I, I saw her do her major French kiss scene with Adrian Brody, who's playing my father. It blew me away. Oh, wow. Seeing, <laughs> seeing Beyonce kissing your dad? Oh, yeah. Well, that's and too I, much. And, and I asked Etta James, I said, did you ever have anything with my dad? She said, no way, he kissed me on the cheek once. But I asked Adrian Brody, he said it was, he said it was amazing, because he had to kiss her deeply about 20 or 30 times. Yeah, well, he was loving a, it, loving that's, it. That's, a, that's the movies for you, yeah. you see? Well, it's fantastic. This record is out, Chess Moves is out now, uh, featuring all the blues uh, with their reworked rhythms. Yep. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. Great Marshall being, Chess. Great being here.